Hey, what's up YouTube? I'm Kevin Newland, and I wanted to show you guys something that you can do whenever you get session files to mix from either a producer or a, a band that you're working with. And all the MIDI for the drums is in one instance or one MIDI track. So let's go ahead and pull in some MIDI here. And something else that's important to do is import the tempo information. And then you're also gonna wanna import a reference track as well. I'm gonna import this master. This is actually a band that I mixed a while back. They're called Pry and they're awesome. So shout out to those dudes. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and match up the reference track to the drum MIDI. We see this first big impulse here is probably where those drums start. So we'll put this here. And then we just wanna listen and make sure that we can kind of see that these MIDI notes are matching up with this reference track a little bit. So we'll just hit play and, and play a couple seconds of this. Awesome, so that does look like all that's lining up there nicely. So the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is come up here to event and we want to separate those those midi notes into their own individual tracks so you can mi mix the kick snare toms and cymbals all separately so we're gonna click select split notes and then we're gonna make sure that the the criteria is all notes split notes cut a new track per pitch and i think these are my default settings now because i use this so often but they may be something else whenever you load this up um, but these are the settings all notes split notes new track per pitch and we're going to highlight the midi and hit apply okay so it looks like that was a success and that's pretty much it for this one now you can take these and you know you can make some new tracks like say for the kick drum i would you know would want to process it separately from the snare and then i would want to do direct overhead and room so for those I would I would make you know three tracks here for the kick drum I would make those aux inputs I would do kick direct kick overhead kick room whatever all right and then from that point if this is the kick midi all you have to do is we'll see we'll go ahead and load up an instance of trigger just to make sure trigger And let's just go ahead and load up some basic bitch sample. All right, we all know this one. Okay. And then go to settings on trigger. MIDI in on. Put that to E1 if you want. That's actually C1 there on there, so we'll... Drag that down to C1. All right, and then we would take the output from the kick MIDI and route that to trigger channel one. And then you have, we'll mute this here. Let me make sure here on E1. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't stay. Perfect, now we have kick drum sample and then you would just do kind of like the same thing here you could drag this down and then you, know, you would open this one up clear out this slot here and then if you wanted to get like a room sample or something CLA see what they got kicks we'll just pick a random one it's probably not gonna sound good cool so now there's some overhead sound and then what you would do is right click on the output of the MIDI here and then right click on two so it feeds to both of these tracks at the same time. Right, and then for room, click on that and then we'll just delete that direct sample, load up an NRG, kick room sample, and then we'll go back to the kick MIDI output, right click on three. So now it, this MIDI should be feeding to all three of these samples. Okay, so I think that's gonna be it for this. Um, and then again, you, you can do that for all these individual ones. 
But if you learned something today or liked what you saw, you know, like and subscribe. If there's anything that you want another video on or information as far as Pro Tools or my personal mixes and, and what I do, let me know in the comments below. Until then, keep tracking, keep stacking.